And Hadley now joins us, uh, not from Riyadh, but from Paris today, Hadley. And I believe you have a special guest with you. I do indeed, Jamana. We're joined now by the president of the Council on Foreign Relations, Richard Haas. Richard, we're seeing a lot of movement in the markets. What do you think is behind it? Are the markets really pricing in this geostrategic risk? I think there's some of that, and there's any number of places that are, shall we say, are churning. Obviously, though, higher rates in the United States. And I think also a real concern about what's going to happen between Italy and the, Europe, and the European Union. When you take a step back and you look at all of the different flashpoints right now, whether it be this U.S.-China trade spat, what's happening in Europe, certainly what's happening in the Middle East, and even what's happening back in the United States, what's your biggest worry? I am worried about the United States and China because it's not simply a trade spat. If you look at the speech Vice President Pence gave a few weeks back, it's really a the beginning of a new era in U.S.-Chinese relations. It's obviously going to be more confrontational. It's got to be worked out. And I don't think we can rule out, for example, the possibility of a real incident or worse over something like Taiwan. You've always got Mr. Putin to worry about who constantly pushes. What's happened in Saudi Arabia has added a whole new overlay of uncertainty because people are already thinking about what happens in early November with the next phase of Iran sanctions. You've got Venezuela. We can go on and on. It may not simply be one thing. What it is is simply a, an awfully long list, and it's got people's attention. We're in an era of big personalities. You have President Putin, President Trump. You also have Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, President Erdogan as well. When you take a step back here and you look at this from a diplomatic perspective, do we have the right people in place? Um, you don't get to choose the people who, uh, who are at any moment in history. So we didn't get to choose these. No. This is clearly the era. You call them big personalities. That's generous. I would call most of them strong men. This is an authoritarian era, all things being equal. Democracy is in something of a, of a recession. But also, I don't see the people in place who are aware, potentially, of the consequences of what they're doing. Think about it. Let's take a step back. For 70, 75 years, we've had this rules-based international system, no great power wars, muted rivalries. And now, when I look at the world, I look at the people running the world, it gives me pause. I think I'm worried that when historians look back on this moment, they're going to see this is the beginning of the unraveling. Talk to me a little bit about what that means for an investor, for folks who are looking to play the market. How worried should they be? The answer is they should be worried, particularly if they're thinking of long-term investments. I think they've got to assume that they can't assume things are going to be good, that there could be great... The unknown unknowns. Exactly. As Mr. Mr. Rumsfeld. Ex exactly. That there's all things being equal going forward is going to be less stable than going backwards. We're obviously also coming out of the era of historically low rates, which was an anomaly. So higher rates, greater geopolitical uh, uncertainty. The introduction of new technologies like artificial intelligence, again, you add it up. I haven't even mentioned climate change, which is going to be a drag on things. We've got American debt. So I, again, it, what I'm struck by is it's not so much one thing that I can sit here and say this is going to be the driver, but it's the sheer number of things. So if you're an investor, you'd basically have to say I've probably got to act with greater caution, greater diversification, because the possibility of some things happening is great, or to put it another way, you'd have to be one hell of an optimist to sit here and say everything's just going to be fine going forward. I have to ask you about the Middle East. I just spent two weeks in Saudi Arabia, just on the sidelines of this FII, Future Investment Initiative. They signed over $55 billion in deals, in spite of the fact um, that we've seen such massive international pushback regarding the death of Jamal Khashoggi. Walk me through what that looks like from your perspective, because you're sitting in the United States, you're watching this. How worried are you about this? Well, I am worried about it. Uh, I don't think the United States and Europe are going to forget about this anytime soon. In spite of the news cycle. In spite of the news cycle. This really had uh, an impact, in part, in part because it was so graphic. You know, the, uh, if it had been a lot of people in a funny sort of way, people like Yemen which we, or Syria, people often can't absorb it. This was totally understandable and absorbable. So I think it will affect the way the Saudi leadership is viewed for an indefinite amount of time. So even though someone like Mohammed bin Salman is popular at home, I think his ability to deal with the outside world is, is quite compromised. And when you think about the Middle East, we were already gearing for a major crisis potentially with Iran, what it would do in early November in response to the new sanctions. Well, now we've got this on top of it. So when the world looks at the Middle East, it already was the least stable part of the world. Now it's essentially doubled down on that. Is it a surprise to you that we haven't seen much movement in the oil markets? 
Uh, yes, uh, particularly given not just what we've been talking about, but Venezuela. Uh, but yeah, look, you have, but you have had the Saudi-Russian dialogue, a little bit of a cushion out there. But going forward, uh, you'd have to be a brave person not to, not to factor in the possibility of higher oil. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now, to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.